All right, people can't believe unless they hear. People can't hear unless somebody preaches. People can't preach unless they're sent. And this is the progression of how people come to know the Lord. And then they must confess. It's good stuff today. Let's read it. Hey everybody, welcome to Bible Time. Craig here. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have your Bible, go ahead and grab that. Open up to Romans chapter 10. We're going to be picking up in verse 5. And if you're new to these videos, thanks for joining. We've been reading the Bible every single day in the year 2020. Usually, 99% of the time, I uh, post a video at 7 a.m. I've missed it a couple times, but every single day we've done it. And so, um, but I want you to know why. The purpose is uh, now more than ever, people need a genuine relationship with God, not just a religion to practice. They need to know that God is real, that he's intimate, he's personal, he's with them, he's for them, and he wants to walk in relationship with his people in a real way. And so I've experienced his presence in my life and I want other people to experience that as well. And that's that's only found in genuine uh, seeking him in your heart and your motivation, not just in doing religious practices for no reason. And so I wanna read the Bible with you with the intention the purpose, the heart motivation of seeking his heart, listening to his spirit, listening to his word, and growing in a relationship with Jesus in a real way. So that's the purpose here. So as we read today, let's keep that in mind. That's what it says, starting in verse 5. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law. That the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness that is based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. I'll be honest with you. I've always been like a little confused by this this whole bit in here of like you know who's gonna who's gonna say in their heart ascend to heaven who's gonna say in their heart descend to the abyss I don't I don't really like know what he's trying to say straight up be honest with you But I do know that he's talking about faith. Like in some way, whatever the meaning is, he's talking about like, it's not like you're going to go up to heaven and accomplish something or you're going to call Jesus up from, from the grave. Or He's talking about like the word is near to you. It's in your mouth, in your heart, and it's faith. It's faith that we need. Works follow, but faith comes first. And now this ever important passage. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what will happen? You will be saved. This is the primary passage for why we would do a, a verbal, pray, out loud prayer altar call in our church service and in any church service that you've been to that does that um, or any evangelist that on the street or wherever asks somebody to pray with them. This would be like one of the main reasons why we do that. And, and the you know because like in many ways we know that the Bible teaches us that that God looks at the heart God knows your heart God knows if you if you have faith or not he knows if you want to confess or not but there's something about speaking out your truth your reality your confession your repentance your invitation for the Holy Spirit to come fill you there's something about speaking it out and I don't think it's arbitrary I think that it has to do with the fact that with 
with the words, with the voice, so many of the most important things in this universe have taken place. When God created everything, he created with his words. When sin first entered the world, it's because the serpent spoke with his words a lie and, and we believed it. it. There's so much, you know, the Bible tells us in the New Testament that we have life and death in the tongue. And so, like, one of the greatest battles that we have is a battle of what comes out of our mouth. Are we speaking life? Are we speaking death? Are we speaking what it is that's on the inside? And so it's very important that we confess, that we speak it out. Like, and, and, and if it's true in the heart, there should be no problem with that. Like if it's actually a reality in your heart, you know, you, you are repentant, you are surrendering your life to Jesus, you are whatever it might be, you, you want to confess that sin. Like there's something to speaking that out and doing that and you should want to do that if that's true in you. Likewise, we've, we've talked about this a thousand times from the very first book that we did in Bible time, January last year, the Gospel of John. He calls us to believe like a hundred times. And that is the, that is the overwhelming message of the New Testament that just like he's saying up here, it's not about your works. It's not about the law. It's not about your righteousness and what you can do. It's about faith in Jesus, believing in him, believing that he has already done all of the works and we put our faith in him and he receives us as a son or a daughter in his family, a co-heir with Christ, saved. And so we have to believe and we have to confess. So we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart and then we are saved. So good. So if you've not yet done that, if you've not yet, and let me just, let me just give you like a, 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 a real life example. Sorry. I always, I always like to use this analogy because everybody resonates with it. You know, one day, if you're if you're a, a girl, for example, maybe you want a guy to propose to you and you want to get married. If you're a guy, maybe there's a day that you want to find a woman and get married. Now, if you're called to singleness, that's totally cool too, absolutely biblical. But just imagine, if, if you are the type of person that wants to find somebody else and wants to be in a lifelong marriage, that will never happen just like just ha it just won't happen like well doesn't she know that in my heart i i love her and i want to marry her no no you have to speak it out you know for a guy traditionally you'll get down on one knee and you'll make it official you'll give that invitation you'll then you'll stand on an altar in front of everybody in front of your friends and your family and your pastor and god and the world and you'll say i'm committing to this person i want everybody to know and so that's what we do when we confess it's like, I'm not just hiding this. It's not private, you know, my own little faith. Like, I want everybody to know. And that's also what happens in baptism. It's like this declaration for everybody to know. And so it makes sense that we would speak it out if that's the reality that we want. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So it's like, again, if we read this passage, I can't not like lead people in a prayer. Now, just getting them, twisting their arm and getting them to say a prayer if there's no real faith in their heart is fruitless. But you know, like as a pastor, and I think as any Jesus follower, as we're making those invitations to people, we need to confirm, ask them like, are you sure you want to do this in your heart? Like you have faith in your heart. And if so, then let's pray because the Bible says this, but don't force somebody into prayer because the heart has to believe in order for justification, right? And so it, it's both are important, but the one has to be a reality before the other is going to be fruitful. Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. That's a big deal. At that time, that would have been a big deal. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. 
for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All right. Question. How will they call on him if they have not believed? Number one. Number two. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? Number three. How are they to hear without somebody preaching? And number four. How are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How beautiful are the feet, how beautiful it is for those to preach the good news. So we see this progression here. And this is really important. Alrighty, so here's the progression. You see this? What he's saying is, how are they to believe if they haven't heard? And how are they to hear unless somebody preaches? And how is somebody going to go to them and preach unless they are sent? Therefore, the obvious implication is we must send people. We must send ourselves. We must send people. We must send people overseas and we must send ourselves across the street to our neighbor. We must preach. We have to speak the word of God. God doesn't choose to just reveal himself to everybody. Like I said, from the beginning of time, words and our voice and God's voice and the devil's voice is the, is the thing. Like that's that's the form of creation of life and the form of creation of death. He chose to use his voice in creation and he's choosing to use our voice in the restoration of humanity. So you have to preach. It's not just the preacher's job. He, he might be the teacher on Sunday for the church, but every single Jesus follower has to preach and share what God has done. Why? Because if we don't preach, people will never hear. And if people will never hear, they will never believe. So we have to go. We have to preach. People need to hear. They need to believe. And then the, the obvious implication from what right above what we just read in Romans 10, 9, and 10 is that then people need to confess. So this is, this is our call. This is a clear, obvious call from Scripture for Jesus followers. If you have the Spirit of God in you, uh, if you have believed on him, it's because you've heard about him. If you've heard about him, it's because somebody shared about him. If somebody's shared about him, it's because they went or they were sent with intentionality, even if they were scared or they felt uncomfortable or they didn't want to. All of those things happened. So now you're a believer. So it's your responsibility to go and do the same thing. Send yourself, send somebody. You must share God's word, you must preach it. And, and, and I don't mean be preachy all the time, like sh just share his word, share the truth. People need to hear it and we need to invite them to believe and we need to invite them to confess. This is so important. And just like we talked about the last couple days, if we really are, ha are, are excited and, and happy that we're saved, we should want that for other people as well. So I'll ask you again what I've asked you a, a million times. Are you involved in this? Are you giving your life to this? Is there something else that's more important in your world than helping people know Jesus? And if so, why? God wants you to be part of this. He's called you to this. You can make a difference with your friends and family. So I wanna invite you to pray about that and to step into the game if you're not yet in the game. If you are in the game, to continue. Don't give up on doing good because in due season, we will see a harvest. So that's what we got for today. Thanks for joining. God bless.